On today's episode, Neuralink aces another human surgery, Tesla builds more drive units than they know what to do with, Model Y Juniper gets a big leak, Cyber Trump and Elon Musk opens a school? Elon Musk's Neuralink brain implant company has performed their second human operation, and according to Musk, the procedure has been another success. Speaking on a special eight-and-a-half-hour Neuralink-focused edition of the Lex Friedman podcast, Elon said that everything seems to have gone extremely well with the second implant. The company is already getting a lot of good signals from the electrodes. What's interesting is that Elon says there are over 400 electrodes providing signal from the brain of this second patient, which might sound low given that Neuralink has always been advertised as having 1,024 electrode channels across 64 individual wires. We know that the first Neuralink recipient, Nolan Arbaugh, currently has a little over 100 electrodes remaining in his cortex of the 1,024 that were implanted. This is due to an issue with thread retraction that disabled 85-90% to 90 of the total connection. Elon Musk actually revealed this change on a Neuralink livestream back in early July. He said that the updated Neuralink Gen 2 implant will have fewer electrodes per thread, going from 16 electrodes down to 8, and that's because the company now has a higher confidence in the thread's ability to reach neurons, so less electrodes are needed. He believes that Neuralink can achieve double their current bandwidth just by getting more accurate with the thread placement, one of the engineers pointed out that they can also move to a higher thread count to increase the number of information channels to the brain, potentially reaching up to 3,000 channels. So if we multiply 8 electrodes by 64 threads, then we get 512. So when Elon says over 400 electrodes are active, that would mean the majority of the thread insertions were successful this time around. Now we wait and see if the second implant remains stable. Neuralink has made several updates to their implant procedure, to ensure a higher quality result the second time around. These include inserting the threads at nearly double the previous step, up to 8 millimeters, and Neuralink has also taken precautions to reduce the expansion and contraction of the brain during the surgical procedure, which should minimize the risk of an air bubble forming underneath the implant. They also believe that by moderately re-sculpting the surface of the skull, they can get the implant to sit closer to the brain and reduce the gap between the Neuralink and the cortex. Neuralink engineers believe that as long as the threads can stay planted long enough for the brain tissue to begin healing over and regenerating from the surgery, then they should remain anchored and stable for the long term. Elon went on to explain to Lex the potential for Neuralink to change communication between human and computer and even human to human, given that the humans in question have a Neuralink device. Even with only 10-15% to of his electrodes working, Neuralink's first patient, Nolan, is already operating a computer at double the bits per second of any other brain-computer interface. Noland is currently operating at around 10 bits per second, which is pretty close to the equivalent of a human using a mouse with their hand, but Elon thinks he can easily reach 100 bps, while future Neuralink users could hit 1000 bits per second, and within 5 years the technology could go all the way to the megabit scale, which would be 1 million bits per second. That would be orders of magnitude more bandwidth than even the most capable human being without the brain-computer interface ability. For an idea of what that might be like, imagine if we slowed down communication by 10 times. If I were to speak at one-tenth the normal speed, it would be agonizing to listen to. Now imagine going up to 10 times faster than normal speed and still being able to understand all of the information being communicated, then try and imagine 1,000 times normal speed. This is where Elon feeds back into his AI symbiosis deal. If AI is operating at the terabit scale, and humans are down here trying to speak words with our mouths, then for the AI it would be like talking to a tree. They'd get bored of us real fast, and that does not end well. Cybertruck is still out there making news, so we've picked a few to share with you. Elon Musk sent Tucker Carlson a Cybertruck to test in rural Maine for a week, and Tucker made an hour-long video about it. Tucker had his neighbor test it against his Ford F-350, and the verdict was that the Cybertruck could replace it for work around his sawmill. Of course, they also shot the truck with handguns. Speaking of, we are seeing some so-called cyber farmers pop up recording themselves doing different work with their Cybertruck, like this heavy equipment towing or the Smith family in Idaho, and sometimes just doing crazy stuff that probably doesn't really help out the farm, but does look pretty cool. 
We know that Cybertruck is tough, as you can see from the latest Whistlin' Diesel Cybertruck durability test number one. While I love seeing them go wild with their testing, they did have some targeted follow-ups, comparing it to a Ford F-150, which was actually put through significantly less abuse than the Tesla. The culmination was the rear frame of the Cybertruck being torn off, which was made to appear like it was just from trying to tow the F-150, but a few minutes earlier in the video, you can directly see that the rear frame actually broke when they dropped the Cybertruck from about six feet in the air onto a concrete slab. Tesla Tino, a Cybertruck owner who has already managed to drive 26,000 miles on his Cybertruck over the past four months, stumbled upon an upgraded V4 supercharger that gave him a peak 323 kilowatts charge instead of the normally limited 250 kilowatts. Wes Morrill, the lead engineer of Cybertruck, said, It's not a bug, but a test. We can expect Tesla to improve its charging rates in the near future. And finally, how about this video of Donald Trump dancing next to a Cybertruck wrapped with a picture of his face after he got shot in the ear? Because that exists just when I start to think that nothing can surprise me anymore. We caught another glimpse of Project Juniper, the refreshed version of Tesla's Model Y, thanks to an employee leaking new photos on Reddit. The post has since been deleted, but as usual, the images on the internet live forever, although we expect a lot of similar upgrades for the Model Y as we got with the Model 3, like the front headlights, interior lighting, and more. There was one surprising element in these leaked photos, the taillight. Tesla hasn't done a light bar like this on any of its vehicles so far, aside from the Cybertruck. The interior picture of the still under wraps vehicle clearly shows us the ambient lighting is there, similar to the Chinese version of the Model Y, and a keen eye can also notice the perforated seats for additional ventilation. And if you're wondering, here is a rendering of what the potential design might look like from a visual artist called Dominic. We expect Tesla to launch the refreshed Model Y Juniper early in 2025, as Elon has confirmed both publicly and privately that it is not coming this year. Meanwhile, we hope that the Tesla employee who somehow didn't figure out to blur out his face from the photo of the rear taillight still keeps his job. If history is any guide, Tesla will give him the boot for violating the NDA real quick. Remember what happened to the guy who leaked the images of Tesla's latest software update containing the YouTube music feature just a few hours before it was announced? They took his job. Elon Musk is opening a new school called Ad Astra this September in Bastrop, Texas, currently open to all children ages 3 to 9. Ad Astra's mission is to foster curiosity, creativity, and critical thinking in the next generation of problem solvers and builders. Ad Astra's approach to education is centered around hands-on project-based learning, where children are encouraged to explore, experiment, and discover solutions to real-world problems. Ad Astra offers a progressive learning environment that emphasizes the integration of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics into its curriculum. Tesla just celebrated production of their 10 millionth drive unit across all factories. This would make Tesla very likely the world's largest supplier of electric vehicle drive units. Meanwhile, most other automakers, which haven't reached the degree of vertical integration Tesla has, still rely on regular automotive suppliers. Building these drive units in-house has also allowed Tesla to perfect the art over time. Every aspect of the drive unit is designed and built from the ground up. Tesla says the drive units today cost less than half of those in the original Model S. Now let's put the 10 million drive units into some context. As of July, when Tesla reached this milestone, they had produced 6,417,180 vehicles. This means Tesla has produced 1.56 drive units per vehicle. The drive unit counts vary depending on the model of vehicle. For example, a Tesla Semi and a Model S Plaid would have three units and your regular all-wheel drive models have two. Now, Tesla says a new drive unit is produced every five seconds. We don't think that would actually be every five seconds throughout the entire year, as that would get Tesla pumping out 6.3 million drive units annually. These would pile up fast, considering they'll likely end up building only around 2 million vehicles this year. However, there is always the possibility that Tesla goes the actual automotive supplier route and starts to partner with automakers selling the drivetrain to third parties. It is something Tesla has done in its early days. For example, in 2009, when Daimler acquired a 9.1% stake in Tesla and deployed Tesla battery packs and drivetrain into the electric smart car. Tesla also supplied the drivetrain and battery pack for the Daimler company Mercedes in the Mercedes-Benz 
B250e. However, Daimler wasn't the only partner Tesla has supplied. Tesla also collaborated with Toyota for the powertrain of the second generation Toyota RAV4 EVs produced between 2012 and 2014. That agreement built on top of Toyota's $50 million investment in Tesla in 2010, as well as Toyota selling Tesla its first real production plant, which is now known as the Fremont factory. So will we see Tesla begin selling its drivetrain technology to third parties again? Time will tell, and the answer will probably be yes.